Kendall runs shamanic training events and private shamanic sessions and she's going to offer us a shamanic journey today. I think that's not exactly the right title. Yes, that's all right. it is. Yep. Yes it is. I just want to thank you. <laughs> and so please make welcome Kendall Williams. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> all right. So I was thinking this morning when I was having a bit of a panic, um, maybe my mum would watch this and freak out. And then I realised, why would my mum be signing up for anything like this? No one in my family would, right? So I'm a bit of a black sheep in my family. Hands up if you're a black sheep. Woo! Woo! We gotta love that. <laughs> so I like to refer as us as rainbow sheep, <laughs> not black sheep, because there's one in every family that's placed in that family to help awaken not just the consciousness of the family but start to change the generational lines, the family lines and the evolvement of what's there. And what we work with with shamanic healing is soul healing and heart healing. And I'm really, really passionate about this work. So a little bit about me, I started with a really conservative upbringing. Um, I was taught to be a 1950s housewife. I can write you thank you cards, I could set any table and I can organise a party plan in five seconds flat. <laughs> so by the time I got into my 30s, yes I am 49 next month, so, but they put me in this teeny weeny little body. And my rest of my family is six footers. So they really, I love how spirit has this big cosmic joke. So I was never going to quite fit in. So by the time I got into my 30s, I had a beautiful husband, uh, two gorgeous little kids, and I ticked all the boxes. Who went through a stage where you ticked all the boxes? A few of you? Oh, you're rebels, are you? Okay, well I was ticking the boxes and being a nice girl. And what I realise when we come to a healing path in our life, and it's usually a crisis point where we realise we feel really empty inside, or we don't like ourselves anymore, or we don't even know who the frig we are. And we come to this stage where things tend to converge and things tend to change. And for me, my mum got cancer, I had postnatal depression after having my daughter and my husband decided to leave who he was working for and start a company and everything just converged in one place and one time. So after about a year of coaching everyone through that and being that good housewife, things started to crack a little bit, right? And cracking is good. So in our tribe at Heart Hive, we say a breakdown is a breakthrough and I'm really passionate about us getting comfortable with that. So I needed to find my way back to wellness because after getting chronic fatigue, which is really just about emotions being shoved in and in and in and in, and in I had to find my way back to be myself. And in doing that, I went on a pretty funny journey. I was this really conservative girl that would ever say no and please and thank you for everything to learn the word fuck, right? <laughs> I turned up some pretty weird events and did some pretty weird stuff. I went on my own and I still look like the little package that I started out at. I didn't lose that part of me because it's part of my story. It's part of who I am. But what happened over all those years is each medicine I came to learn really helped me unravel a part of myself. And when I learned to unravel that part, it spurred me onto the next section and the next section. And you go through these times when you're just information gathering. And so I really encourage people to try new things. You know, even if people are weird, I had someone sniff my hair at a retreat once. <laughs> and she's this giant of a woman and she almost looked like a tree. And she was, I was a little me my little Angora jumper and twin set. And she's like, ooh, your hair, what do you do? And I said, I wash it. <laughs> like, she had these dreadlocks and she's so pretty, it so, smells so nice. I'm like, yeah, I wash it. Like, it's not that hard, people. So I went through a lot of different challenges and I found that humour for me and the way that I teach such working with shadow energy 
is such a beautiful way to connect to people. Okay, it's what makes me laugh because at the end of the day when I was unhappy, I lost the joy and I lost the spark and I lost who I was as a person. So now my whole kit and caboodle is go through all the dark stuff and unravel all those parts, but we're doing it for joy. Joy is your birthright. We're not here to suffer, right? And of all the stuff I've listened to today, which has been absolutely fascinating, the one thing we need to come home to is our heart power. We need to own it. We need to say, get the frig out of the way. I'm coming through. And the most attractive thing in someone is someone who likes who they are. So my whole mission has been to put that head on the pillow at night and feel like I love who I am. And that is a constant learning, action and journey. So when I started working with shamanic work, I really had to go to into some dark areas of my life. I had to go into my family dynamics. I had to go into how everyone bullied me my whole life. I had to go into all these parts of myself that where I didn't know where that strength was and I had to bring it back. So even though shamanic work is about shadow work and that is where the power lies, it's about understanding who you are and it's about finding your personal medicine. Now, do I think everybody's special? No. Do I think everybody's unique? Yes. And everyone that comes to train with us and everyone that touches our lives is teaching us at the same time, but everybody is there to learn how to understand who they are. Not to be told, not to say you need to do it this way. So many modalities I, I worked with told me I needed to do things a certain way and it kind of still disempowered me a little bit. It excited me, but then it disempowered me. And what finding your medicine is about is working out why am I here? What is my mission? How do I find that mission? How do I start owning that my power works this way? My frequency, my medicine is unique to every cell in my body. And nobody Nobody on this planet should tell me how to freaking do that. So I say to people, I don't want to know what courses you've done. I don't know what, want to know how many certificates you've got, whether you're a master at this or whatever else. Tell me what you do with it. What do you do with it? Where do you create change? Where do you make the world better? You know, do you hug the lady in coals? As far as I'm concerned, you're a healer, right? You know, we get these labels. The one Delabel, mother, daughter, good wife, what else? How many, how many labels? We get you guys in courses to write your labels down. My gosh, we could go forever. So stop doing that and start waking up to who you are. And then we really, really passionately own what do I need to focus on? And right now in the world, we are overwhelmed with soul sickness. Who knows someone with depression? Put your hand up. Hell, yeah. Who knows someone that doesn't have purpose in their life and is really struggling? Put your hand up. Right. Who knows someone that has anxiety or panic attacks? Who knows someone that has weight and eating disorders? Yep. Yep, beautiful. Who knows people that have alcohol and drug abuse issues? Who knows people that are in domestic violence and trauma? It's a tsunami out there right now. And I can't worry about what's happening tomorrow. I need to worry about now. And every single one of us has a unique medicine to assist with soul sickness. But to do that, what we need to do is we need to heal ourselves as well. And finding your medicine is about creating the power within you to know that you are 100% capable of being well within your mental, physical and emotional selves. And you never, ever, ever let someone take that power away. Right? When we go to a healer now, when we go to someone who's doing, like I do personal healings for people all the time, but the idea is that I'm assisting them find their way home, home to themselves. I'm assisting them to create their power. 
And that is the beauty of what this work has done for me. And I like who I am. I, in, I have crappy days. I've had a pretty crappy week last week, actually. My car blew up. Um, and probably, we were only laughing, the girls and I were laughing this morning, it's probably blown up so that I couldn't do the runner from today. I have to be on this stage, because I probably would have done the runner. Because it's all a bit intimidating standing up in front of everyone. It's all right in my environment at work, because I control my environment, but I don't like not being in control. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it, I have OCD issues, all right? So it's about owning your medicine and it's about learning your medicine. And I'm so passionate about this work because I see people change and I see people transform. And I see people start to realise, you know what? The reason I've never really fitted in before, the reason I edit myself all the time is because I don't like to admit that I actually am this way. Well, we need to start reversing that. And it doesn't matter what else is going on in the world right now, we're becoming really fractured. We're becoming fractured because technology is showing us trauma all the time. And so if we hyper-focus back in and work on where our heart centre is and work out the internal calm, that core sense of self that goes, do you know what, I know who I am. I know that I work for Source, I show up, I do what makes me feel good, and I like who I am. Whether I'm having a bad day or a good day, that's going to roll through because that's what emotions do, they roll through. But I actually think that I like who I am, and that shifts and changes things. And p those of us that are suffering soul sickness, which is far worse than any other, anything else on the planet right now, because it keeps us dumbed down, it keeps us sad. It keeps us stuck. It keeps us not asking questions. It keeps us disempowered. We need to stop doing that. We need to learn that we are unique, that we are our medicine women and men. All of us have medicine. And that doesn't mean we have to be a healer, but it does mean you signed a beautiful contract to bring absolute joy to this world. And you need to get back on track and stop listening to whatever else everyone is telling us that you're not enough of and you need to stop editing. I say the F word a lot. <laughs> I promised I wouldn't here when I was here today but I, you know what I do? Because I find it fun. Because I was raised in an environment where I wasn't allowed to swear. But the men were allowed. But the women weren't. Men weren't even allowed in the kitchen in my household. That's women's work. You getting a grip now? So when I'm visiting my mum, and I love my family, they're beautiful people, but I, I say, oh, for fuck's sake, mum. And she's like, Kendall. <laughs> but I think, yeah. <laughs> and it's not because I'm angry. It's because, that for me, that word is helping me express freedom. And that's part of getting my medicine back. That's part of me expressing freedom and expressing who I am and expressing creativity. And what I love seeing shamanic work do is how it gets to the core issue and not the symptoms. And so many modalities I've worked through, I just wanted to be able to help more. And sometimes people were just, they're just, they're feeling better but they're not getting to that core. And what shamanic work does, because it is so deep, because it's earth medicine work, it helps people get to the core of what the actual problem is and shift that. And if we shift that, there's a knock-on effect. Do you have to do the work? Hell yes. There's no magic wand. The difference is the results are incredible. And you can ask anyone from our practice or from our trainings or our Facebook page, whatever else, it's the commitment to integrating that we're giving the people to power that to understand what do I do now to move forward? How do I integrate the medicine now? Where do I go with that? What do I build? What do I pray for? What do I focus on? Because the one thing we're losing right now we're losing the power to dream. We're losing the power to create because everything's so negative that's coming towards us. And that's what we need to do. 
The shaman's path is about storytelling and the storytelling is about learning how the internal realms work, how they work and how, what beauty comes up from the symbols and the information because when you're accessing here, you're getting one story. And it's not just the mind is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, but it's not allowed to be in charge. The heart should lead, the mind should follow. It's a tool. So what we need to do is most of us, who thinks most of us in Western society think from here? Yeah? yeah. Hell yeah. So. If we can actually start to understand that we need to get the heart to be working, all right? And the heart to be listening. And the heart and the soul which work together in perfect harmony has a really quiet voice. And it's so quiet. And you heard um, Irina speak earlier about healing. It's beautiful. And you know how she said she heard that voice? The voice that says the nice things. Now that voice is your intuitive voice, your soul, your heart voice. But the world is so loud right now, so many of us can't even hear it, that we go straight to here. And we need to reverse that. We need to get us all back in a state of understanding, what do I want to do, not what should I do? How many of you go, I should do this in a day or I should do that? We use that word? It's so naughty. <laughs> so I'm going to reverse here today. So the F word's going to be, yeah, hell yeah, okay? And that should word will be the naughty word. Because should means guilt. Should, when you ever say should in a sentence, it means I think I should have to do this because someone will judge me if I don't, right? Whereas when we want to do things, the word should's never used. So it helps guide us to what's happening. It helps us understand that this isn't healthy for us. This isn't good for us. This doesn't create wellness for us. And I have two mottos in life. Get rid of the gray areas. Start getting passionate, really passionate about this planet. How friggin' beautiful is this planet? You know, when everyone wants to go to Mars, I throw things at the TV. Because I'm like, why do you want to go there? It's red dirt, man, right? And obviously now I know there's even more aliens out there. They're probably all having a little Star Wars party there. So this planet is incredible. Think of the landscapes we have. Think of the wildlife we have. Think of everything that we have. We can't get that anywhere else. And so it's up to us to save it. Because right now, there's only one virus on this planet, and it's us. We're wrecking the joint, right? Think of the planet as a big Airbnb. <laughs> and we've come and we're doing the whole party thing and making a big mess. And we don't even care, we don't realise. We don't want to know about it. But the thing is, when we start working with heart medicine, we can start understanding that we don't have to take everything out on everyone else anymore because we're unhappy. We can start really building our inner worlds and our inner world reflects our outer world. And that's how things have to change. Because right now, we're trying a lot of things and we're only getting sicker. And we're talking about Western culture here. We're not talking about Na native cultures, we're talking about Western culture. Never in this lifetime before have we had this much money, this much food, this much land, this much everything, and we have never, ever, ever been sicker than we are now on mental health. We are sick. And we're sick because we are getting disconnected. And if we stay disconnected, we're gonna get sicker. And if we get sick, the world gets sick. That's just how it is. And we can think that we can run off and do ayahuasca in Peru, and we can do this and we can have our life-changing moments, right? And that's wonderful and that's beautiful and it's a gift. But if we don't integrate what we're learning, then we are never going to change. I do so much of this work and I help so many people and they help me. 
because every healing, every workshop, there should always be teacher and student, student and teacher become one. You don't give without receiving. So I have grown so much in myself from giving to others. But if we don't start learning to get community back and working with each other, nothing's going to change. So at Heart Hive, we are very, very passionate about tribe. We're passionate about equality, but we want you to succeed. We want you to find your passion and we want you to learn that the shaman's path, if it calls you, is a way to learn how to come home to yourself. So what we want to do today is we don't have enough time, obviously, to take you through all the big journey, but we would like to do a drumming, little drumming journey with you all. Would you like to do that? Yes. Okay. okay, so we use rattles and we use drums um, in shamanic training. But this is um, a beautiful kangaroo drum and this is a new baby for me. And this new baby um, is giving me quite a workout because I'm used to my nice deer drum which is nice and soft. This guy likes it hard and fast, right? So with this drum what we're going to do is we're going to take you on a little sort of imagination journey. So you know how I said to you we're losing this ability to create and dream in? The shaman's job on this planet in all cultures, which means the medicine person of, of the cultures and the planet, their one job is to dream in the future. And this is what I'm going to ask you to do now. You're going to dream in your medicine of what you need right now. And that's, we do that by connecting with nature and the environment and we also connect in with our spirit animals which we use as medicine to help us grow and understand what we need, what we are lacking in our life right now to move forward. So with the drum, the drum all hoop drums have a hoop in them which is made from wood which is how we work with the tree medicine and the animal skin is how we work with the animal spirit. So we work with both animal and nature kingdom together. So what we're gonna get you guys to do, now I'm not gonna talk to you during the drumming because I'm off in my own little planet, all right? I'm gonna explain to you what I'd love you to do. And if you can't drop into a little trance, you sort of do this, then I'm just gonna ask you to listen to the drum and feel the energy of the drum coming through for you, okay? Because what the drum does is as the drum goes around, and I'm used to you guys being in a circle and I can come up to you personally, so I hope that you can still feel the vibrations. What the drum does, where you feel the vibrations, you might feel it more in your head or in your heart or in your feet, wherever you start to feel energy, that's where the drum's clearing blocks for you. That's why you feel the energy in that area of your body, okay? So I'm going to ask you to just sit in a minute and I'll talk you through just taking a breath and you're going to be closing your eyes and when I start drumming, I want you to just feel the drum to start with, feel the energy because the drum represents the heartbeat of this planet, okay? And it resonates with your heartbeat and that's why we love drums so much. So once you start feeling that heartbeat, I'm going to ask you to imagine that you feel like you're relaxing. I just want you to relax and I want you to feel because this all our medicine is about feeling. So I want you to drop into your heart and feel like you're just dropping into your heartbeat. And then once you feel like you've dropped into your heart, I'm going to ask you to imagine that you are going to have a beautiful scene around you, a beautiful garden. And that beautiful garden could be waterfalls, it could be pastures, it could be a rainforest. Allow yourself to just imagine it, okay? Are you making shit up? Yes, you are. But that's how we start to learn to dream in, okay? So don't worry about your mind creating it. Just imagine, and if you see a waterfall in a beautiful space, just imagine you're there. And I want you to imagine you're there and I want you to imagine you're walking through that Why? why I'm drumming. And as you walk and wander through that area while you hear the drum, what you're going to do is see an animal and an animal that comes up to you. And that animal, we're going to be setting the intention 
that the, the animal that you see in this session that you're going into is the medicine that you need right now to move forward. And it's a great idea if afterwards, sometime tonight or tomorrow, you look up your animal and see what that spirit meaning is for that animal. Because that is the medicine your body is lacking right now. Your mental state is lacking right now. Your emotional state is lacking right now. And what you're asking your inner world to do is tell you your story. It's not my story. I'm not saying go get that animal. It's your story. And that is very powerful to start unraveling that part of you. So are you with me? Yeah? Cool. So what you'll hear is when I do start drumming, and it is quite loud and you'll hear me singing, and they might turn my mics off so I don't blow anything up, you will hear the drum going to a normal beat. And then what you will hear is there's a spot where you'll hear me stop and go. Okay. And that's what we call a callback. And what the callback means is you let you can say thank you to your animal, or if you're just listening to the drum, just take a few deep breaths. And it means I'll be starting to bring you back out of the drumming and back into your bodies again. Okay? All right, beautiful. Okay, so let's everybody close their eyes and take a beautiful deep breath. And we've been working with our minds so much today, so much information we've been taking in. So let's just settle into just dreaming in, just allowing ourselves to enjoy the moment. And as the vibration starts, you'll take a few breaths and drop into your heart and just allow yourself to connect to your own inner world. Breathing in and breathing out.
Taking a deep breath in, this time really breathing the energy up through your feet, breathing up through the base of your feet and bringing in Great Mother, breathing up and breathing out, breathing up and letting out anything that's held in your heart sounding if you like, breathing up and letting out. <sighs> breathing that energy up all the way to the heart. Breathing out and letting go and letting your body relax. Beautiful. And breathing down from the stars. Breathing down from the starlight from which you came to this earth plane. Breathing down all that knowledge and beauty and grace. Breathing down through the top of your crown and dropping back into your heart and filling it with light. Breathing it in and breathing it out. For we are both earth and stars in perfect balance and harmony. The grace from the stars and the warmth from the mother of nourishment and nurturing. We are not one without the other. And we listen to that drum, our heart remembers mother. It remembers that without the trees and without the oxygen, Without the light of the sun and the beauty and softness from Grandmother Moon, Father Sky, that we are nothing but stardust. And we breathe all of that beautiful medicine back in and fill it up our hearts and our souls. And we feel that light again in our walk and in our spirit. We feel the power come back in. And we know that we have our own medicine within us. Taking a deep breath in and opening your eyes and coming back into the room. Giving your feet a stretch if you're lying down or sitting. Wiggling those toes and wiggling those fingertips and it brings us back into our bodies. <coughs> and feeling all of that beautiful sense of calmness when we drop out of our head and into our heart space. So thank you for allowing me to come and make a lot of noise in your room. <laughs> um, I hope that you can look at the medicine animals if you got one or you just enjoyed hearing something different. We all resonate differently. But if you take something away with you from today, I hope that you take that we need this planet. This is, we are always starlight. We will always ascend when we are ready. We go from lifetime to lifetime. But we need to enjoy our earth walk. It is our birthright to enjoy every moment here and put all of that love back into this place. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>